breach attack simulation. So we're going to use Attack IQ as our breach attack simulation platform, integrated with Secure Endpoint, and we're looking for collections of screenshots, keystrokes, and clipboard data file script. And we're going to be running in audit mode. Okay, we're connected to Secure Endpoint. Let's go ahead and check out policies real quick just to get everybody up to speed on where things are. We've got two policies. One is audit. That's when we're going to test without any preventative capabilities on the asset that we're testing against. And the other one is going to be a protection policy. And you can see here we've got quarantine block, we've got the Tetra engine also running. And then we've got two groups defined. These two groups are associated to the protect and audit policies. We've got a computer that we're going to test against. And that computer will be either in audit or protect mode. So we're going to go ahead and move it from protect because our first test is audit. But let me just show you the endpoint here real quick. And you can see it is in protect mode currently. So what we're going to do is go back to secure endpoint. And we're going to go ahead and move that computer to the audit group. Now we'll go ahead and update. This will take a second, not very long, and that should change. And there we go, we got audit policy. Now, the other caveat here is, is that Microsoft, when you move uh, or disable any protection mechanism on the platform, seems to turn on real-time protection. Maybe a good thing, but in our case, we don't want that because we wanna test uh, the results of secure client. So let's go ahead and make sure that's disabled. We're good there. I've got a couple of tests already pre-made. As we move in the series, I'll show you how to create one. It's pretty simple. These are very basic uh, tests. And in this case, there's one called collections of screenshots, keystrokes, and clipboard. So we'll go ahead and let's check out that scenario. And if we go into configure, you'll see right from here, there's the parameter script files that we could add supported files. We could do the interpreter. All of that's available to us. But when we go into detail, we also have that here as well. So we see it's a scenario capture screenshots, redirects uh, keystrokes for some seconds, and then zips it up the file. We've got some cleanup parameters, and there's a lot of the tags that are associated to this particular uh, test. There's some parameters, as we saw earlier, and then we've got our preventative or mitigating capabilities if one exists. Here they're saying, you know what, install, install and verify secure uh, endpoint product of some sort. Here's my tactics and techniques. And we'll go ahead and finish that off. Now that endpoint does have Cisco Secure Endpoint installed on it. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll run this scenario. Now this does have the attack IQ agent installed on the asset as well, just in case you were wondering. We'll go to events here. And what we should see is that policy update that we just submitted. And you can see there's nothing on top of that. So that's our starting point. There's nothing fresh uh, above that. And so we're running this test on that specific uh, asset. I don't really have a big environment here. So that, that's the only events that we're gonna see. So it'll be pretty clean. Okay, let's refresh this. Ooh, it's lit up pretty good here you can see that we have at the bottom that policy update. And then we've got, what, 12, 13 events that were triggered. And you can see a couple of them here. The really cool thing is, is that we can jump in and see the tactics. So the adversary is trying to communicate with compromised asset. We've got uh, resource development. The adversary is trying to establish resources they can use to support their operations and some details into it. And we can pivot right into MITRE ATT&CK FRAMEWORK IF WE WANT MORE INSIGHT. THOSE ARE THE TACTICS. THEN WE GET INGRESS TOOL TRANSFER. SO ADVERSARIES MAY TRANSFER TOOLS OR FILES FROM AN EXTERNAL SYSTEM OF A COMPROMISED ENVIRONMENT. USER EXECUTION. YOU CAN SEE THAT TACTIC WAS EXECUTION. AN ADVERSARY MAY RELY UPON SPECIFIC ACTIONS BY A USER IN ORDER TO GAIN EXECUTION. OKAY. SO IT TALKS ABOUT PHISHING AND uh, INTERNAL SPEAR PHISHING, REMOTE ACCESS SOFTWARE. Great detail if you're not familiar with it. 
user execution malicious image and this is talking about adversaries may rely on using or user running a malicious image to facilitate execution with AWS AMIs, Google or GCP images or Azure images. Might use Docker. Anyways, good insight. And now I know, and, and what's interesting, this is much broader than the clipboard or screenshots. Because we have the agent here, we were able to see additional communications. We're going to pivot into that in a second. The last one here was around system services. They may abuse system services or daemons to execute commands or programs. So again, great insight. If you need to pivot into MITRE to look at additional detail, you can do that. Now here we're, we pivot right into device and we can see here the exact command line argument that was passed. We see the tactic and the technique used here. Command and script interpreter or scripting interpreter was leveraged here. And that's because it's a PowerShell script collection.ps1. Now when we pivot to the next two, we can see again, resource development, execution, command and control as tactics and a ton of techniques that are associated to it. You can see it was not quarantined. Again, the same here. If we go to the left, we now start seeing some network-based connectivity. Here's the IP, the destination, the port. We even see the attack IQ certificate, but we did associate that with command and control and exfiltration. And then a bunch of techniques were also associated to that. So that's pretty neat because that was just a result of how that agent was functioning. And as we start moving over, we can see command.exe. It was executed by python.exe. And that was the agent being invoked and leveraging its capabilities. But we detected that as a tactic of execution and a technique of command and scripting interpreter, Windows command shell. That's the command line argument that we were able to pull from. And then finally, you see Python here as well. And you can see the command that was uh, passed. So it's attack underscore graph dot py. You see the path. I, again, the tactics uh, in this case was execution. Let's just finish up here. We can see that it does detect this particular test fully when we're in attack IQ. So we can cancel it out here. Once the detection is found, um, that result has been made. So I think we're pretty confident here that go ahead and cancel that since it's 100% detected. And let's go ahead and confirm that. And now we have the report that we can jump into and dig into a little bit deeper Ge generic script e execution. Here's the uh, execution policy bypass for that PowerShell script to run. And then all the details that are associated with it are included here as well. Now, when we look at detection, we can see Cisco secure endpoint, detection type, the classification correlation and the summary. So we're all good here. Nothing um, really just that stands out. Um, let's jump into the observable details and we can see that collection.ps1, all the details associated with it. We can see PowerShell. We see the SHA-256, the bypass command that was entered all the information that uh, happened during the execution of this test with attack IQ. All right, I wanna show you one more thing here. Let's go to results, MITRE attack, and we can see prevention and detection. Prevention, we didn't prevent anything. Detection, however, it's showing that we were 100% able to detect each one of these uh, particular attacks. You can also take a screenshot of this and put it into a, a larger report if you wanted to as well. There is reports that you can generate from Attack IQ as well. The next one that we're gonna do is gonna be focused on the preventative side.